Okay, we are ahead of schedule. When does that happen in academics? You know, I was like, usually if you give professors a word, they talk for hours, you know. I mean, come on. So uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor Fabio Sempalotti. He uh, arrived at Purdue in August of uh, 2015 and was uh, previously employed as an assistant professor at the University of Notre Dame. We really don't count that, you know, but uh, that's okay. Uh, originally from Italy, uh, Fabio obtained a combination of the typical European BSMS degree, like a more diploma program uh, in aerospace engineering from the University of Rome in 2000 and then completed Father MS degree in aero, aero in 2002. From then until 2006, he held engineering positions in governmental and industrial entities connected to the aerospace industry. And in 2006, he uh, started his PhD studies at Penn State University uh, and then completing it in 2009. And after completion, uh, as mentioned, uh, went uh, uh, had a st still a little postdoc at Penn State, but then joined uh, Notre Dame. So since uh, being here, uh, since 2015, has been super active, uh, lots of publication and uh, other activity research grants. I won't go through the list, but I would like to mention that his main research areas are in, include wave propagation, acoustic, metamaterials, continuum mechanics, structural dynamics, and their methods in differential equations. Uh, he has been very active in the academic world uh, with uh, growing international recognition and uh, also uh, quite a bit of service to uh, the professional community. So it's my great pleasure to have Fabio as part of uh, this celebrating our associate uh, professors and I'm certainly happy that he's uh, in ME. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Edgar, for the generous introduction. So um, I will go, uh, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of an idea of the path that brought me here, especially for uh, maybe the benefit of the students. Very often we are asked, uh, what is the path that would uh, bring you to be uh, a university professor or maybe uh, a researcher in academia? So I thought this would be a good opportunity to at least tell my side of the story. Uh, so I, when I finished my uh, bachelor and master's degree at the uh, University of Rome, uh, I definitely wanted out. I didn't want to be a professor. I never thought about being a professor. Uh, I actually wanted to go to industry and wanted to see what that was about. Wanted to use what I had learned in, in school on, uh, say, more uh, in a more practical applied environment. And so I had a, uh, an amazing opportunity as a first job. I was uh, uh, very passionate about uh, space application, particularly the use of structures in, uh, in, in space. And so I, at the beginning, I got a job as a consultant in a uh, pretty large uh, consulting engineering company. And that was a great opportunity because I had the chance to experience many different projects uh, and many different programs in a short amount of time. So I worked uh, on the Vega program at one of the two European launchers, still structural side, and even a short stint on uh, satellite design. Uh, then I moved uh, uh, to Paris, where I had this incredible opportunity to uh, join the uh, French Space Agency. And uh, uh, for them, I was working uh, still as a structural engineer on uh, the Ariane 5, uh, the other, the second uh, um, European launcher. Uh, so this brought me essentially in 2006. Uh, and then I started thinking, well, this was great, a great experience. I learned a lot, but I want to finish, I want to uh, further my education. And so that's where... I crossed the pond and arrived at Penn State Aerospace uh, where I did my PhD work. Now, uh, at that time, what I was thinking is, okay, I get my PhD, then I go back to industry, uh, and maybe why not stay in the space industry in US? But this was before I actually uh, met these three outstanding gentlemen and, uh, uh, and faculty members, uh, and nonetheless my advisors. Uh, at Ed Smith at Penn State Aerospace, Conwell Wang uh, at the time uh, at Penn State ME, uh, today Michigan ME, and Steve Cullen at Penn State Applied Research Lab, who really opened my eyes to what research was about and what w could have been a career 
uh, in, uh, in the research field than why not in, uh, in academia. So that really started uh, tipping the scale in some sense towards, you know, from industry uh, towards academia. Um, I did my research, my mostly doctoral research in the area of structural health monitoring, essentially uh, trying to find techniques uh, that can tell you in real time if something is going wrong with the structure. Uh, that's a very young version of myself when uh, we were taking uh, vibration measurements on a Black Hawk helicopter. Uh, when, uh, when I graduated, I moved to, as Eckhart was mentioning, to uh, Michigan for a one-year postdoc, and then right after in 2011, I started as a, a faculty member uh, at Noedim in the mechanical and aerospace department, and finally moved here in, uh, in 2015. Now, uh, if uh, these three gentlemen have been very important to put me on this track, there's a large group of people who are really instrumental to keep me on this track. And uh, these are my students. And uh, uh, to the, the, the title of today's uh, gathering is Celebrating Associate Professor. I would add, and their students, because without them, uh, it would be very hard to do what we do uh, every day. And so I was very fortunate, as many of us here, to uh, have a very uh, talented uh, group of students, very dedicated, or at least they make me believe so. And, uh, um, and so I really, this is my opportunity. They are, uh, almost all of them are here. This is my opportunity to uh, tell you thank you very much for what you do every day and uh, for pushing the, the, the group forward. Um, so what do we do every day? Well, uh, the core competencies in the group uh, are essentially in the general area of dynamics of continua. Uh, and uh, it, it basically hinges on these uh, three uh, uh, three topics, continuum mechanics, structural dynamics, and, and wave propagation. Uh, this basic knowledge we, gen we apply to mostly uh, four areas, or at least the areas in which we are mostly active these days. Uh, wave propagation and multiphysics dynamics is more kind of an umbrella area because a lot of the things that we develop uh, here uh, actually benefit all these other, uh, these other areas and these other applications. Uh, in, uh, in what we do in this area is mostly developing theoretical and numerical techniques for wave propagation, mostly for elastic uh, wave propagation in solids, but uh, we also look at their coupling with other uh, physics or uh, with other field like uh, thermal, um, fluids, uh, acoustics, and some of this we do it with, uh, of course, in collaboration with other faculty, uh, Professor Christoph, Professor Scala, Professor Marconet, they, they, we all have uh, very fruitful uh, collaborations in, uh, in this area. Uh, we also work in elastic metamaterials, fractional mechanics, structural health monitoring, I will tell you a little bit more in, um, in the next uh, uh, few slides. So uh, what is a metamaterial? Well, uh, the actual uh, translation is beyond the material. So it, it is essentially, a, you can think of it as a composite, uh, is a, mater a material that we uh, assemble and is a combination of uh, different material constituents uh, with different shapes eventually placed in different orientations. So to uh, create an assembly uh, that has very unique wave propagation characteristics. Uh, and so, uh, I, within this area, of course, there are many subtopics, and I'm not getting into, into this. It's just a snapshot of some of the activities we carried on in the last uh, few years. But really, the bigger picture of this is why do we do this? Where well, we're mostly interested in uh, thin solids, uh, essentially those that are typical of lightweight structure. Think about aerospace systems. Uh, and uh, of course, the, the main role of these solids is to carry load, is being structural material, structural solid, but at the same time, we're looking at the use of metamaterials as a way to make them sort of intrinsically smart uh, in a way that the structure itself can also uh, guide uh, the uh, energy that is flowing through it uh, um, and um, uh, helping uh, in uh, managing vibration and noise control that uh, this structure builds up uh, in uh, operating conditions. Another area where uh, we, these days we are putting a, a lot of efforts and resources is uh, fractional order mechanics, uh, which is essentially a combination of fractional calculus and essentially structural mechanics. Uh, fractional calculus is an, ar an area of applied mathematics. Uh, it's fairly developed uh, that essentially deals with uh, differential and integral operator of known in integer order. So as engineers, we are very used to 
uh, uh, first or a second order derivative and their meaning in, uh, in our uh, engineering uh, field and applications. Uh, uh, fractional calculus uh, deals with the question of, uh, of a derivative of order one half, for instance. Uh, and even push it further, looking at derivatives of complex order uh, and uh, variable order. So we look at, very, at this very unique tool and uh, merge it with, we're, we're not mathematicians, we're not developing new uh, mathematical uh, models or in, in fractional calculus, but we are looking at its application in our area. And as I said, particularly in structural mechanics, uh, one uh, uh, most uh, more uh, uh, natural uh, connection of this uh, uh, mathematical instrument to mechanics is in local mechanics because that uh, derivative is intrinsically no local. But we found some very unique opportunities also in the area of homogenization. In the area of fractional mechanics, here we are using the variable order version of this operator. Uh, particularly here we're interested in uh, looking at crack formation and, uh, uh, and growth uh, into a material and uh, a very unique capability of, of this tool is that of needing very small amount of information to really start predicting uh, where the crack will form and how it will propagate. Um, another recent area we looked into is in nonlinear dynamical systems. Uh, this is a, a recent study that we did looking at uh, the uh, a propagation of a dislocation into a, a kind of a lattice structure uh, under the, uh, the effect of external load. So we're looking essentially in this area at reformulating uh, structural mechanics uh, through the, the, the lens of this uh, mathematical tool. Uh, in the area of structural dynamics and uh, health monitoring, uh, what we are doing is still looking for the most part at thin wall structure. Again, those that have uh, important application in lightweight uh, structural design. And we're mostly interested in uh, uh, sort of uh, using geometric tapers and uh, uh, kind of indentation of uh, different types to control the way wave propagates through, through the system. And again, application could be very different from vibration to noise control. We looked into energy harvesting, so extracting mechanical energy from the system and convert it into uh, electrical, uh, electrical energy for a low power type of application like uh, on-bar sensor and transducers. Uh, some other applications here in uh, creating uh, embedded acoustic lenses to direct uh, the propagating waves in, and mold the propagating waves in very specific ways. In the structural health monitoring, we are mostly interested these days in imaging techniques. And so you can think of this as an X-ray or an MRI uh, in the medical application, but applied to structure. So we, we use uh, co concept like uh, vibration, uh, electrostatic response of the system to build an image of certain uh, material properties and so to understand if something is going uh, bad with, uh, with the structure. So I guess I use pretty much all my time, but uh, very briefly I teach in mechanics and dynamics uh, for the most part. Uh, as most of my colleagues, I try to be a, a good citizen and uh, give back to my scientific community. Um, either in uh, editorships, technical committees, uh, reviewer for uh, um, proposals or, or journals, and also uh, within uh, my own department, uh, of course, in, 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 different kind of, uh, in different kind of duties. And with this, I would like to thank again my entire group and, of course, my uh, collaborators. This is not really a complete list, so uh, uh, I, I just, uh, uh, it's just a snapshot of that. And just a couple of words on my mentors. I had an incredible group of mentors, uh, both and, uh, here at Purdue and at Notre Dame. Uh, as you all know, tenure time is very challenging. There are lots of things that are going on. And so it's extremely important to have people you, you trust and you can ask uh, for, for suggestion and to put you on the right track. And, um, and so a big thank to them as well. And uh, with this, uh, thank you very much for being here today, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Fabio. Uh, great contributions. Any questions for Fabio? We uh, uh, So uh, what's in the store for you in the long run at Purdue? What do you want to do here? Well, I mean, uh, there are uh, 
um, several things uh, in the making on, on the research side. So definitely that's probably uh, now my, uh, main, uh, uh, my main interest. Uh, and uh, you know, working towards furthering my, uh, my career. And uh, why not taking advantage of a sabbatical? So <laughs> it's an outstanding idea. <laughs> I'm very so. supportive of that. <laughs> uh, any ambitions towards administration? Like, you know, there's some of us that like that stuff, not everyone. Well, I guess as I showed at the beginning, everything is possible in life, right? Yeah. I mean, you start with a plan and you end up completely somewhere else. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, or in general. Uh, Mark, do you want to take this back and close it out? Or shall I close it out? Okay, well I would like to uh, thank uh, all three speakers uh, again for uh, uh, presenting some of their research and activities at Purdue. Uh, certainly uh, a very exciting work being uh, performed and uh, uh, in a great environment. would like to uh, thank the college uh, for setting this up. It's uh, always a nice event and uh, love the turnout today. And uh, with that, uh, I hope you have a great week. And, and this, is the, this is the only celebration of the festival for five years in semester. It, it varies, you know, by sometimes we get a big cohort coming through. <laughs> <laughs>